under control and entity analysis, the first class we are talking about today is the boundary class. As mentioned earlier, the boundary class is the one that connects the user to the system or system to other systems and in the overall view uh, the BCE analysis with these analytical classes including boundary are part of the UML design and analytical architecture which is meant to be used so that we can get close enough to the actual architecture and actual platform so that we can instruct our programmers and developers how to create the software. So basically the BCE system has few really simple uh, rules. The boundary class uh, represents the interface so there's one boundary class for each actor in the use case. This means that there's a boundary for customer to use the system, there's a boundary for the administrator to use the system, or there's boundary for the client to use the server system. There's one control class in each use case which takes care of flow of the events and entity classes used to save data. But on this presentation we'll talk more about the boundary class itself. So, like I said, the boundary classes are interaction layers with external objects which may be actors, people or separate entities like banks, insurance companies, tax office or other information systems we need to connect to. There's always some boundary. It's a user interface like touch screen, gamepad or keyboard or mouse or uh, in case of information systems, it's the port we connect to with the protocol we are able to use and so on and so on. Of course, there's also hardware interfaces like printers or barcode readers and stuff like that. But the idea is that the boundary class exists always when there's a uh, place where we have to send some information or collect some information into the system. There's always boundary class in that place. So, the boundary class have a couple of different representation ways. There's a symbol for it, there's a stereo, uh, stereotype symbol for uh, boundary class, and there's also the uh, normal way of implicating that this class follows the boundary class stereotype. So, these all three things mean the same thing, and if there's a BCE-based analytical architecture, this means, all these means that this class, or this part, or this component of the software represents user interface, or is responsible for doing that sort of things. Of course, uh, since we are also uh, always talking about user interfaces or interface in case of boundary class, it means that it's usually heavily simplified version of the platform interface services or uh, platform uh, operating system services. So basically anytime we use some windowing system uh, like TK Inter with Python or well any other approach really uh, we always are using uh, those in boundary classes to create the user interface which we can then uh, which then can allow actors or users to input data or show data to users if the other way around. So basically when we go from boundary classes to something that's actually implemented it usually means that we add things related to the platform or operating system or other ways how the data is collected or shown to the user. Finally, considering the different connections, since we have boundary, uh, the boundary itself doesn't necessarily do anything except collect, uh, show forms, show data, show graphics, and collect information which is then sent forward into the control class for uh, manipulation or analysis or calculations or other things. So 
Even if in real life we could probably write our functional code inside event, which is defined in the user interface, in the BCE model the boundary is only the form or the graphics itself or the connection point itself and all the heavy lifting happens in the control class. That's why the boundary class can only connect to control classes and actors which are, like I like said earlier, people or other information systems are always connected to the boundary.